this going to be enough, sir? We're standing here in our ball wash room. This is where we uh, bring the, the range balls in and run them through our ball washer and then load them into our bins. Uh, we have uh, 24,000 golf balls on hand at the start of every season. And uh, we like to use the Srixon range ball. It uh, has a very nice feel to it. It feels a lot like the high premium balls that are sold in golf shops. We replace the balls every spring. We've got uh, what we call our ball picker. It's a tractor with uh, two gang golf ball picking units on them, one in the front one in the back. It can load or pick up about uh, 3,000 golf balls at a time. So we bring the balls in, we pour them into our hopper here. Turn on our ball washer. Let them be fed into the washer where they run through a spiral track. It has soft bristle brush that cleans the dirt off of them. They come through the wheel, the lifter wheel at the far end, which pushes them up, them up through the PVC pipe and out into our bins. Well, today we'll be uh, doing a club fitting with one of our uh, regulars here at Zigfield Troy. Jay Baum is a low handicapper and uh, he's going to be uh, looking at seeing about whether he needs uh, to get fit for a new set of irons. Hit them all like that, Jay. Hi, Mark. How are you? Good, Good to thanks, see you. Thanks for seeing me today. Glad to have you out here. I've had these clubs for a few years. You know, I have a basic understanding of lie, loft, stiff, regular. Those are the basics. But, um, you know, maybe I could do a little bit better if you showed me through. Okay. Took me, took me through the steps here. Well, all we need to do is spend a couple minutes with the interview process. So let's okay. get started with that. The importance of the interview process is to find out how tall they are, uh, their hand size, uh, some of their tendencies, whether they pull the ball, push the ball, slice, fade, hook, draw, you name it. But what we're trying to accomplish here is to make sure that we get the proper lie angle. That mm -hmm. is the number one uh, specification when it comes to club fitting. If you get okay. too upright a lie, you're going to pull the ball left. Too flat of a lie, you'll push the ball to the right. So we got you at 5 foot 10 and 35 and a quarter for your wrist to the floor. We look at the pink chart down here. We'll look down five foot seven to six foot one, and then at 35 and a quarter, that puts you in the yellow. So what we'll do is we'll pull out a yellow color code. All right. We'll test that for lie angle, and if we need to go up or down off of that, uh, that's what we do when we hit the ball in order to test. So this that. is a starting point. And this then is we a starting value. point. Very good. Exactly. Right. But what we want to do first is test your club. The reason why we start with having them hit their own golf clubs is that's what they're used to right out of the start. So they get warmed up, we test that club, and then when we're done testing that club, that's when we can make our best decisions on what different clubs may need to be um, offered and recommended. So let's put some tape on the bottom of your club. You got a seven iron there. We're gonna hit balls off the board. Great, good contact. So let's take a look at that tape. Look at that. Look at that scuff mark right there. Our goal is to get that as close to perfectly centered as possible. I'm gonna leave yours off to the side because we'll compare that with the flight scope in a couple of minutes. At this point, we go to the fitting clubs have him hit shots with that club, compare that to what he's already using, and then start to narrow down just what specs he should have. Here's the yellow right here. Mark, the fact that that's a graphite shaft, that not gonna make any difference, we're just worrying about the lie. We're the just moment. worrying about the lie at the okay. moment, that's correct. Okay. All right, let's see how that yellow performs. Okay, so there's our mark right there right. on this side. So that means that this is too flat of a lie angle. So sure. flat means it's Flat uh, means that, that the, at impact, the toe is hitting before and, the, the, and the heel right. is up it's, off. It's more like this. No, it's Another actually way. the opposite. It's That's that. flat. That's doing right. that. So that tells me that we're in the neighborhood of about two color codes, about two degrees off. Wow. So we would need to come up from yellow 
And let's try a white. Wow. Here's an I-15, so we need this shaft here. This will be a shaft that will work a whole lot better for you, so this okay. will be something that's likely to be the right fit for you. Combination. Now, Ping has all the different lies. When you work with other brands, do you, um, like you said, you have machines that can bend and move them around, and that's... Right, we've got the Ping fitting system, we've got the uh, TaylorMade, and then we have the Mizuno. And so okay. they have different lies in their components too. That's All right, let's try that white color code now. Yeah. Nice, good contact there. Look at that, right in the middle. How about that? <laughs> so you're a white color code, and that translates to three degrees upright. And if we measured your 7-iron inside, my guess is that it's probably 2 degrees upright. Now, I would also imagine if you have the wrong lie angle, then players may try to adapt, and now they've compensated, and they're, they're putting right. the wrong swing on a club because they have exactly. the wrong club in the hand to begin with. Well, and, and I'm a perfect case in that because when I first started playing, I didn't know anybody, and I just went into the sporting goods store, and I did what everybody else does. Hey, this feels good. Right. And I out the door took them. They were too flat. And so I developed an outside across swing without releasing the hand so I could to kind of massage that ball straight where I wanted it to go. That's just how I developed my swing. You know, sure. I, I adjusted to the equipment. Versus the equipment fitting the person. That's exactly right, yeah. Now let's hit on the flight scope and we'll start measuring your 7-iron versus the ping 7-iron and we'll see if there's a definite improvement one versus the other or Maybe you've got Good a piece of equipment right there. Good to know. All right. The flight scope is the real uh, upgrade to club fitting. Uh, we uh, re acquired the, the uh, flight scope just last year, and what that does is it gives us even a better picture into the window of each golfer's uh, ability. It tells us how much uh, the ball is spinning, how long it's in the air, how far it travels, how fast the club was being swung at the moment of impact. It can tell us all of these things gives us a better window into just exactly what's going on with the club that the golfer is hitting. Boy, like you knew what you were doing. Having the marks on the bottom give me a little confidence, maybe. Okay, great. Good, okay, that's five good shots that we can use. All right, Jay, now we're going to go into uh, club number two to test. This All will right. be the Ping I-15, number seven iron, with the AWT stiff shaft. So, Mark, this was the one that actually had the, the best lie from uh, right. off the board. That was the right on lying, yeah. That was ball number five. That's a good one to end on right there. Very good. That felt good. I mean, I know, like you said. Yeah, you the don't, shaft you don't... was working well, well for you, I okay. thought. And now what we want to do is try a G15 just to compare ball flight. We'll keep the same shaft, but we'll try a G15. Atta boy. This is nice being able to do this underneath the uh, underneath right. the roof, protected by the elements, because this can be done any time of year. Winter time, fall. I know you guys got the heat lamps too. We got the heat lamps. Custom fit any time of the year. Very good. All right. Let's take a look. So we first hit your TaylorMade, right. then we hit a Ping I-15, and now we just got done with a G-15. When I click uh, View All Results, mm -hmm. that'll take an average of all of those five shots for the three clubs, and then it'll rank top to bottom their recommendation. The machine likes the G-15 first, the I-15 second, and then your uh, TaylorMade third. Go figure. But they are close in many, many ways. There's not a lot of distance, I see. carry the difference carry. there. 
your mile per hour on the club speed did increase a little bit with the ping and that's probably because of the AWT shaft. That's a little bit lighter weight, it's not as heavy as the Project oh, X. That. Here you can take a look at the, the, uh, the backspin and for a 7 iron you want somewhere in the neighborhood of 7,000 RPMs and so you were just a little bit on the high side and uh, then you got to see just the actual vertical initial launch and then the actual descent angle oh. and then how high the ball was in the air. They're all very close and in the big picture you could play your tailor-made and still have a, a good round of golf, yeah. still have a lot of fun and not have a seed of doubt in the back of your mind that, you know, gosh, I'm playing with a bunch of garbage here, I need okay. something different. If you wanted to make a switch, then the G15 or the I15 might be the way to go because that shaft is a lighter weight shaft. And there are options with other companies with similar lightweight shafts, so it's not like you're just stuck to the ping as well. One thing that we can do with uh, the flight scope uh, for a fee is offer customers uh, to track every club in their bag. Wow. And so you hit three or four or five shots with every iron, go right through it, and then when it's all done, we can give everybody a readout, you know, and what carry you can expect out of your eight iron, out of your seven. And then you start to see what's the difference between each iron. Well, That's thank, it. Thank you very much. My I, pleasure. Uh, I uh, maybe need to talk to you about uh, making some changes. I'm not quite sure. Um, if the lie's fine in my current clubs, it's workable, but I wanted to change a shaft, that's, that's also something you guys would do here. Oh, sure, yeah. And really, in your particular case here, the club head is not the problem. Uh, problem being, I use that cautiously. Too, too flat or too... It, you know, you've got a good lie angle there. Okay. But the shaft, you might get a little bit more performance out of a little bit more lighter shaft. Keep it stiff, but just right, yeah. a little bit lighter in weight. Okay, good to know. You know and, and we can always swap out shafts, too, uh, if that's an option that you want to do. Well. I'm more educated than I was 45 minutes ago, so <laughs> thank you. My pleasure. That's a lot of fun. No matter what level you play, club fitting can dramatically improve your ability to hit the ball, your ability to control the ball, and just your overall fun. So whether you're just getting started and playing for five, 10 more years, or you're an accomplished low handicap golfer, club fitting makes a difference. On the next episode of Ziegfeld Troy Legacy. Take lessons, take as many lessons as you can. Gail's been coming to Ziegfeld Troy Golf here for about 15 years, I'd say. There you go. That was in the sweet spot, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, look, look. Don't listen to your boyfriend or your husband or to the guy next to you on the driving range. Just listen to a pro.